we gonna see the Canadian curse be broken? No, there's no chance. Uh, Edmonton, everybody well, says Edmonton the only, too. The only, the only chance Canada has a win, has a winning anything is because the Olympics starts in February. Yeah. That's, that's the only thing Canada has any chance of winning in hockey this year. That's for damn sure. By the way, speaking of Olympic hockey, after next weekend's final college football rankings of the season, we will be having an exclusive video where Nico and I are going to predict who the Canadian and, and U.S. hockey team is going to be. So you guys want to check that out, especially if you're as excited for Olympic hockey as we are. But now let's get into what I think a lot of people come in, come to the podcast for, something that we've been doing uh, for quite some time, pretty much since the beginning of the show when, when we had the NFL going on, and that is our FEOTB NFL Pick'em. Uh, right now, we're recording this in the middle of Monday Night Football so I can get on the road to Las Vegas uh, tomorrow for my Box State Bruins. The Buccaneers are up 10-3, to 3, and all three people, all three entities involved in the Pick'em pick Tampa Bay. So if the Bucs win, everybody will have one extra win. And what I'm about to say, and if they lose, everybody will have one extra loss. Not that hard to figure out. Standings wise, Nico still sitting at number one, 154 and one season. Very bad week, though. Another bad week. Yep, six eight. No, well, it wasn't a great week. Ever, ever since we've been on Zoom the last couple of weeks, my I'm, I'm blaming it on that because I have been terrible picking games on Zoom. Well, we're back in person next week, so I guess we'll see if that's a, if you're going to be able to stand behind that theory forever. Uh, I moved back into second. I I had a nine and five week. So I'm now 87, 67, and one on the season. And the bench warmers, it was fun while it lasted. I told you guys, you were almost the Iowa of the top 10 or, or of the NFL pick them. Turns out you were the Michigan State, but uh, you are now bringing up the rear once again, 85, 65, and 10. You guys had the same record as Nico last week, 6, 8, and 0. Oh. But that, all that does is set up a, a comeback week. I, I know you don't even need a comeback week. You still have 20 wins on me. But I am I, I'm, I will say I'm impressed with myself. I didn't think that I was going to get as many games right last week because all the games that I thought were going to be locks, I lost. The Jaguars uh-huh. or the, the, the Bills, the Packers, it was bad. But, hey. It was very bad. <laughs> it's all over the place. Yeah. I, was- I have been terrible at picking games. Let's put it that way. At least the Bengals won, and they didn't hurt you this week or last weekend. I don't know if they're going to end up hurting you this week, depending on how how you see that game going. But let's get into it. Kicking things off on Thanksgiving Day, the Bears going to Detroit for their annual Thanksgiving Day game uh, for the Detroit Lions. I'm going Lions uh, because I don't think Justin Fields is I, he's injured or maybe like questionable for the week. And God damn it, I think that the Lions are good enough to win one game. One game, and it's the Bears. The Bears suck, right? I, I don't know. I'm going with the Lions over the Bears. I'm, I'm not overly confident in that one, but they, weird, weird shit happens on Thanksgiving. That's all I'm Not so fast. The Red Rocket played really well last week. One first play, 80 or what, 50, whatever yard bomb it was, touchdown. Uh, first play from the Red Rocket. Andy Dalton, I don't care if it's Andy Dalton. I don't care if it's Justin Fields. The Bears are winning this game because Detroit is that bad, okay? Detroit is is full tank. Don't worry. You didn't go 0-17, but you still are going to be 0-16-1. Let's put it that way, Lions fans. I'm sorry. First franchise in NFL history to have two years where they go 0-16. How, and, how and a year that now. yeah, and a year that they changed the game limit, and you still go in sixteen. Uh, that would be insane. We're split off. We're split off the bat. Uh, next game, Raiders going to the Cowboys for that annual uh, game in Jerry's world. I'm going Cowboys because uh, the the Raiders lost to the Bengals last week. So uh, yeah, it's, it's saying no bounce back. I'm going Cowboys. Pretty easy actually. Yeah, the only the only. I'm going Cowboys here 100% too. The only thing that gives me cause for concern, the Cowboys struggle against the AFC West. They have, yeah. They have. So, I mean, we'll see. I don't know what the hell happened last week. The Cowboys should have beaten the Chiefs. The Chiefs didn't even play well. Everybody's anointing the Chiefs again. No, I just don't think that the Cowboys – maybe the Cowboys aren't as good as we think they are, but hell no, the Chiefs aren't better. I don't think the the Cowboys are – they're out coached, let's put it that way. That's why the Chiefs are a better team. Uh, I'm, uh, either way, it's Cowboys the whole way. This game may be over before the second quarter. Yeah, I mean, the Cowboys might have – last or two years ago it was a rough day for them. They're going to have a lot better of a Thanksgiving day. Then the nightcap on Thanksgiving night, Buffalo at New Orleans. Uh, it, I, I really don't know. I, I'm going Buffalo based on the fact I think their roster is more talented. 
Um, but I'm not confident after what happened last weekend. So I'm going Buffalo over the Saints in, in New Orleans on Thanksgiving night. How do you see that one going? I'm going Buffalo 100%. First of all, did you see the contract for Taysom Hill and the, the, the agreement? He's getting less money to play quarterback. They structured his, his contract, his four-year $60 million deal that they're paying him to not play. You know, that they have Trevor Simeon starting, by the way, funny enough. And and they're still paying him all that money to be a flex option. Four years, 60 million. And he's getting only 32 million because he's not playing quarterback or whatever it is. It's it's the stupidest deal I've ever seen. I don't it was first of all, if you paid him all that much money, just entertain him at quarterback. Trevor Simeon has been terrible, well, terrible last week. And you have to entertain it and, and put him a quarterback. See what you got. You paid him all that money. If he doesn't play quarterback anymore, he doesn't play quarterback anymore. And you can still move him to flex. But at some point, the guy was a quarterback for a reason. So you got to give him a shot. And the Saints, for some reason, don't want to do that. And I'm going Buffalo here 100%. I don't. The, the, the Bills are just the, <laughs> the Bills are just ridiculous. Let's put it that way. I did not know that that's how the Saints structured his contract. They negotiated oh. against themselves so hard oh because he might be the better option at quarterback, but you don't want to pay him more money. So stupid. It was absolutely ridiculous. No clue why that happened. Uh, next game up, my f- second favorite week of the season. The Steelers come to Cincinnati to play the Bengals. I'm riding the Bengals' hot streak. Joe Mixon had 123 yards last week. And they ended up donkeying the Raiders. I know it's a different situation, but, hey, the Chargers beat the Steelers on Sunday Night Football. And we all know what happened the last time Steelers went to Cincinnati. Uh, tell, prom, I'll promise you Juju Smith-Schuster remembers how the last time they went to Cincinnati went. Yeah, I'm going Bengals. There ain't no Corvette. Corvette's going, pulling up to Cincinnati this year. But either way, I'm going Bengals here too because the Steelers, the Steelers crushed me on Sunday Night Football. I was like, oh, they're going to win this. They, they they look they they make Big Ben do too much. I'm telling you right now, Steelers win this game if Najee Harris runs the football hard. But I don't think that for some reason they don't want to do that. And Najee Harris is hurt, so they're saying, "Nah, you can beat us. We don't care. We'll make the game interesting at the end." But besides that, no. It's this is Bengals. This is, this is the Bengals game to lose. And you, I don't know how long it's been, but this may be the first time in. 10 plus years that you've swept the Steelers in a season series. I'm looking that up now, but yeah, it's, it's been quite some time. Obviously we hadn't beat them in Pittsburgh since I think 2000, it was the before 2010. Um, so when did the Bengals sweep the Steelers? We're both on the Bengals. That was interesting for me. Oh, it was uh Cincinnati swept its season series with Pittsburgh back in 2009 en route to a division oh, so, title. So only 12 years, shorter than I thought. 2012, uh, they beat the Steelers in 2016 and then beat them at home once again in 2013. So Andy Dalton had like a two-year stretch where he owned the Pittsburgh Steelers. Joe yeah. Burrow is better than Andy Dalton ever thought of being. I, I don't I don't hate that pick like I thought I did. I talked myself into it. Uh, Bengals were on the Bengals against the Steelers at home. Uh, Buccaneers at Colts. This one's interesting because the Bucs right now are only up 10-3 on a bad Giants team. The Bucs have lost a few games in a row. They haven't looked great. And the Colts are coming off a dismantling of what everybody thought was the best team in the AFC a couple weeks ago. Back-to-back weeks of dismantling. So let's put it that way. Back-to-back weeks where they just came in and punked teams. And right now, Jonathan Taylor is the best running back in in football. It's because Derrick Henry currently isn't playing. Um, But you can argue and make the argument right now, Jonathan Taylor and Derrick Henry are those two, the two best running backs in football. And they're telling Carson Wentz, buddy, just get the ball, turn around, give him the football, because your offensive line is still damn good. And all you got to do is just make the smart play on third and four and just throw an out route. It's all you got to do every now and then. Besides that, give the ball give the ball to Jonathan Taylor, and you'll be fine. And this defense is playing very good football. This, this Colts defense is, is surprising. A lot of people play very, very well. I'm going to go with Colts here. I, I'm, I, this is a weird one for me. I don't know why, but I think Tom Brady going into Indianapolis has always been weird. Always been weird. That's why I'm going with Colts here. I don't know why, but the Colts come out of a red-hot streak. Colts may be the second-best team in the AFC. Uh, I mean, maybe, trust, maybe. trust me. 
This one Maybe. was not. I, I'm pick, I picked the Bucks, but it's not a pick where I'm like, oh, easy win because with what Tampa Bay has shown now, I think that Tampa Bay will still be top three team in the NFC. But they had the similar, they had a similar skid in the regular season last year. And honestly, I don't even know if Brady cares about being a one seed in the playoffs anymore. He doesn't. He's been in so many playoff games that it doesn't even matter at this point. So I'm nervous about that one. But I'm going the Bucks over the Colts. You're going with the home team, the Indianapolis Colts. That brings us to a game where I you basically have to pick which quarterback you trust least. And uh, I trust Tua Tagovailoa the least. I'm going Panthers over the Dolphins in Miami. I don't think that's too much of a stretch because the Panthers have shown to at least be a good team throughout the season, and the Dolphins have not. So I'm, I'm going Panthers. And did you see that play CMC had where he used his face to make sure that he wasn't down? That's oh. just, I never even thought of doing that. I honestly thought when your face hits the ground, you're down. But apparently I was wrong. <laughs> CMC is built different, let's put it that way. And so that's the whole reason I'm going to go with Panthers. Because I, I picked up Cam Newton in one of the fantasy leagues. He almost came me back to win, but I played against Jonathan Taylor, so it didn't matter. But the Panthers are a much better football team. They're they were not as good defensively as they were at the beginning of the year. But they still got enough talent on the edge and outside to dice up the Dolphins. And I think Cam Newton, if you don't have Cam Newton on your fantasy team already, if he's available, go pick him up. Because I think with Christian McCaffrey, he may just – that offense is going to look more fun and fun every week. It may not win football games, but it'll be fun to watch. This year, Turkey Day at MyBookie gives you plenty of reasons to be thankful, starting with a $250 risk-free bet on Thursday afternoon when the Dallas Cowboys host the Las Vegas Raiders. You'll want to hit the spread between the Raiders and Cowboys at my bookie. When you win, you win. And if you don't, my bookie will refund you up to $250. $250. Simply put, you can't lose this bet at all. And that's what I call no risk, all gravy. Before you get your wager in, set yourself up for success by doubling your first spot, first deposit. We're using promo code BENCH, that's B-E-N-C-H, at MyBookie. That's promo code BENCH to double your initial deposit all the way up to $1,000. So you won't need to break the wishbone to be at the to be the one to come out ahead. Feast risk-free turkey on risk-free on Turkey Day with MyBookie and make sure to stick around for seconds as they gear up for what should be a fun Black Friday with tons of odds boost that will have your belly and your pockets full. Bet anything, anytime, anywhere with MyBookie. Sign up at MyBookie.ag. Use our promo code BENCH, B-E-N-C-H, to start your winning today. They are looking like a totally different team now that Cam is back. So we're both on the Panthers in that one. I just don't think that the Dolphins are a very good team. I, I like Brian Flores. I like some of the guys, but no, Tua is not the answer, and, and they haven't been able to figure themselves out for the last few years. So I'm, I'm not confident in the Dolphins at all. Uh, Titans going to New England to take on the Patriots. I think this is the first time they're going back to New England since the infamous wild card game where Bill Belichick and uh, Vrabel decided that they were just going to freeze time or just let time pass and, and nothing was going to happen. Uh, honestly, I'm going with the Titans and my reasoning. This seems like a good bounce back spot for – or it doesn't seem like a good bounce back spot for the Patriots. It seems like the Patriots have overperformed for two weeks and we're maybe looking at a little bit of a letdown. You're, you're playing a Tennessee team where I know that they're better than you in the conference, but they've had a couple really bad weeks. I mean, Tannehill threw four interceptions the other night. I'm pretty sure the Patriots now are still in, are, are ahead of you in the standings. The Patriots are number one seed in the AFC. I'm almost positive because they had a bye week and, and they, they, they jumped ahead or are even now with the, with the Titans as the number one seed in the AFC. But I'm going to go with the Patriots here because I think the Titans are still holding on for dear life, and they still haven't figured out what they had to do. They don't have Julio. They don't have Derrick Henry. But you did not use A.J. Brown to your fullest extent, and you got punked last week. I I, I think they could, they, should, they should have won that game by big time last week. But you get punked like that. And the Patriots at home, Bill Belichick is a little bit more chip on his shoulder. And – I think the Patriots are just playing with the screw it mentality. Like we're just going to come out punk whoever we play, especially at home where they can re, I don't know, make up for the, the AFC wildcard game. But you can do your best to, to, to try to cover that up and come out with a big win. If they do win, the, the Patriots are only a game in front of or behind Tennessee. So if they win, they would then cause a, at least two way tie at the top of the AFC, possibly a three way tie. Cause, uh, 
The other team up there is Baltimore. So right now it's Tennessee at eight and three, Baltimore at seven and three, and then New England and Kansas City are both tied at seven and four uh, in the AFC. So it, I mean, there's a lot going that kind of goes against my uh, possible letdown situation. I this might be the the week that convinces me about the Patriots moving forward, but I don't know. I'm hoping Jeffrey Simmons bounces off Mac Will or Mac Jones' body a couple times after he sacks him, and that's how the Titans are going to win this thing because I don't think I mean. They the last couple of weeks have been awful. I've been so diehard with the boys the last two weeks, and it, it ain't losing bad. losing to the Texans. Shout out Tyrod Taylor, but god damn, that was bad. <sighs> it's awful, terrible. Yeah, I mean Tyrod, good for him, but no, that was bad. Uh the team that kind of made you not look the best last week, the Eagles going to last New two Jersey. Weeks. The last two weeks, yeah, that's that's true. Going the Eagles going to New Jersey to play the Giants in MetLife. Uh, I'm riding the Red Hot Eagles. Jalen Hurts ran for three touchdowns yesterday, and they finally understood what he's there to do at, at the quarterback position. Don't have him drop back. Have him run the read options. Have him run the RPOs. That dude is a monster when he does that. Jalen Hur- Hurts is the face of that team now. They, yeah. There's rumors that they may draft a the quarterback. They may do this that. That's Jalen Hurts' football team. This is like this is his organization. He, Him and Devontae Smith are going to be the best – one of the best top – 10 duos, quarterback receiver duos, and football in the next three years. And they just got to figure out their defense and the running game. This team right, right back on track. The Giants have the worst injury bug in football. They don't have any talent on offense, healthy, or playing at full strength. Saquon is back this week, but that dude is definitely not a full strength. Mm-hmm. Kenny Galladay, not a full strength. Sterling Shepard, not a full strength. The Giants have one injury on top of another, and I just don't think they're there this year. So I'm going to, I'm, I'm done being having the Eagles bite me in the ass. So I'm going the Eagles. Uh, I, as we were talking, uh, the score changed on, on Thursday. Is Monday Night Football, uh, 17 to 10. Now the Buccaneers are out in front. So the Giants aren't going away, but they are still trailing. So we're both on Philadelphia in that NFC East matchup. Next one, Falcons at the Jaguars. I'm going to be honest with you. This is one where I think I could uh, lose in a heartbeat and it would not be that big of a surprise. But the Falcons last two weeks have just been getting whooped on. In Jacksonville at home, when you're Urban Meyer and you were like sitting in the in the in Duval and you're looking at the schedule, what were a couple of the games that you probably looked at and you're like, oh, we have a shot to win this one? I have to believe that the Atlanta Falcons were on that list. There's no way that the Falcons and the Jaguars are looking at each other like, oh, this that's the team that we can't beat. Both those teams are like, this is our this is our one of the three wins that we're going to get this season. So but, I'm going but- with Jacksonville at home. I'm going to go with Atlanta because I, I don't know why, but I, I don't trust Jacksonville still. I will pick against Jacksonville every single week until they prove me wrong 10 times in a row because I, I do not trust them at all. And Atlanta helped me out at the beginning of the year. But Atlanta not putting up a single point on Thursday Night Football, a single point. That is goddamn embarrassing. That is just terrible. You didn't even get in field goal range. That's as bad as you can get. And to not score a point in a National Football League and this team – Look, they don't have Calvin Ridley. Cordero Patterson was in, didn't play last week either. So I'm hoping Cordero Patterson is back this week. But I'm going to go with the Falcons here because Jaguars, I, I, it, I'm, this is a game I'm staying away from betting wise, but I'm not going with the Jaguars here at all. Uh, another game that I'm staying away from betting wise is the next. Or one my eyes Jets. from watching <laughs> that, that 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 as well. Jets at Texans. I'm going with Houston for what they were able to do against Tennessee and. The, the Jets are like up and then down and then up a little bit and then down and give credit to Flacco because he wasn't the reason the Jets lost, but it's just like when he was in Denver. He's not the reason that the Broncos lost all that games, but he sure as hell doesn't help. Oh, you yeah. don't do anything. He's just a, he's just a body out there. He's a six foot six body. That's all he is. Uh, he's yeah, a target. The, the, the Mike White experience was fun for two, for a week. Wasn't it? It was nice and fun at your expense. But, and now, now he lost his job to Joe Flacco. Crazy how that goes around. But I'm going to go Texans too because, look, Tyrell Taylor is one of the most underrated quarterbacks in the league. The dude just just competes. He doesn't have good teams. He just competes hard. And his team is always in contention in games when they have no right to be. Hey, the best team that he was on was the Buffalo Bills, and he took them to the playoffs the year before that they fired everybody and hired Sean McDermott and drafted Josh Allen, Tyrod Taylor took that team to the playoffs and that wasn't a good bills team. So he, he, he has something he can win in this league. 
it's been shown that. So uh, we're both on the Texans riding the tie rod train. AFC West, are, are you going to be at the game this weekend? Oh, I don't. I have no idea yet. So I, 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 I don't know if I want to. <laughs> and honestly, with the what happened on on Sunday Night Football, this might be a good one to skip. I'm going to be in Vegas, so I, I won't have the option. But the Chargers going to Denver to play the Broncos. I, is this the first time? This is the first game of the season, right? I don't remember. It was Broncos. the first one. Yeah. yeah, it was the first game of the season. Eckler's homecoming game. He's going to be playing in Denver, coming off a, a Sunday Night Football performance where he scored four touchdowns and was basically one of the main reasons why. The, the Los Angeles Chargers were able to beat the, the Pittsburgh Steelers on Sunday night football. I'm going with the Chargers mainly because I want to see Eckler be successful in Denver. He's going to have a hell of a cheering section because I know plenty of Western alums that are going to be going to this game for the sole fact that they're going to be able to sit in the stands and go, I played a Western because you know what? I've done that too. <laughs> I've gone to games where I've been watching Austin Eckler and like, Hey, I played with that guy. You got you guys know I played with that guy. So I'm I'm going with the Chargers. Also, Justin Herbert finally broke out of his his skid. So uh, it's going to be a rough day for the Broncos defense because Vic Fangio is still your coach. Yeah, I'll ever remind everyone what happened last year when the Chargers came into town, had a ten point lead, double digit lead, um, and then Drew Lock, you know, kind of came back and we won on a last second touchdown. I am. This is a game I'm willing to lose. I'm picking the Broncos because I hate the Chargers. I'm willing to lose this. I'm willing to concede a game because I have a 20 point, 20 game loss, but I'm not picking the Chargers, especially when the Broncos are at home, especially because the Chargers on the road, on the road, the Chargers always find ways to either lose stupid games or make teams that shouldn't be in the game in the game. So that, for that reason, I'm going the Broncos. If it was the other way around, even though every single, the Chargers play 17 road games a year anyways, so it doesn't really matter. But I'm going the Broncos here. Yeah, that's that's some bold. You still have no love for anybody else in the AFC West. And I, I'm no, here they're trash. It. They're, yeah. they're trash. Um, until they went to the Super Bowl, I said last week, until they get to, to the Super Bowl, they're unproven. Oh, uh, we're split on that one. I'm, I'm with the Chargers. You're going with the Broncos. Uh, Rams and Packers next game up, NFC Divisional Round rematch. Packers coming off their loss to Minnesota. The Rams not looked good the last couple of weeks. Uh, I'm going with the Packers at home, especially Aaron Rodgers is getting better. Like he came back from COVID that first game wasn't great, but this past weekend he did everything that he should have to win that game. Four touchdown passes. Are you kidding me? Four touchdown passes in a loss to the Minnesota Vikings and Kirk Cousins. Man, I'd be pissed off if I was playing in Green Bay right now. And my last name was Rogers. That's yep. that's terrible. Yep. Let's get him pissed off more. Go Rams. I'm picking the Rams here. Get him pissed off as possible. Play your heart out, Aaron Rodgers, and then have your team fall short because your team sucks around you. You don't know what supporting cast won't suck around you, the Denver Broncos. So you, I hope you lose the Rams. Go Von Miller. Go go Jalen Ramsey. Go Rams the whole way, and and. I, I, I this, this is a game I'm also willing to lose, but I'm all off of morals. I'm going going with the Rams because the Packers did everything they should have last week, but their defense is horrendous. And Kirk Cousins looked looked like a goddamn uh, uh, god. Let's put it that He's way. He's a big last quarterback, week. yeah, a, a god last week because and the Packers defense let him do that. Well, by the way, do you think Vaughn Miller's got the grass stains from his back off his jersey yet when George Kittle put him through the turf? Or was that oh check? Was it no. Kittle or check that put him in the ground? Kittle did that, and then Juszczyk did that to the linebackers. Oh, those poor guys. <laughs> they throttled both of them. Yeah, it, what a debut in a Rams uniform for Vaughn Miller where you get absolute – that was the block of the year. That was the pancake block of the year. I'm just going to oh, say yeah. that. That was awesome. Uh, no, I'm going with the Packers because I remember the last time Jalen Ramsey tried to cover Devontae Adams. Uh, oh, shoot. I forgot about that. Damn. So, oh, that's a good, yeah. Yeah, I'm going with the Packers. Uh, next game up, Vikings at the 49ers. It's funny. These two teams, the uh, interdivisional game here. But uh, the Vikings off that win, I don't think they keep it going because the 49ers are figuring shit out and they're running the ball in creative ways again. And Kittle is is a psycho. Kittle would rather go with zero catches and five pancake blocks in a game than he would catching a single pass. And I love it. I, I love him for it. I'm going with the 49ers. I think that they beat the Vikings, especially being having it be in San Fran. That's a huge plus for 
the 49ers because Minnesota plays really good at home, but they don't necessarily play the best on the man, road. Man, I don't know what you're talking about, man. That coaching staff in San Francisco is just terrible, man. They have, they got one lucky win a few weeks back. They, they're, they're struggling, man. I'm Kirk Cousins, you like that all the way, baby. The 49ers are poorly coached. They got a good roster, a poor coach, and I'm going with the Minnesota Vikings here because – People forget who the uh, best rookie receiver last year was, and Justin Jefferson is reminding everyone of who he is, and Kirk Cousins is just finding him in open space and letting him do his thing. So I'm going with the Vikings here because Dalvin Cook is also slowly getting back into form as well. Uh, we'll see. Uh, we're split on that one. Minnesota and San Fran. Talk about, by the way, if you want an example of speaking something into existence, listen to the pick for the last three weeks and just listen to when Nico talks about the 49ers and you'll know exactly what speaking it into existence means. Every single week. Don't you worry. It has been we'll be right back. We'll be right back here next week on, on Old on Far on the Bench YouTube. Yeah. Uh, Browns at Ravens next game. I'm going with the Cleveland. Um, I think this one is actually going to be a lot uglier than it would have been if it was a couple weeks ago. A couple of weeks ago, I was fired up for this game. This week, I'm like, uh, both these teams are just trying to get themselves back right, and I don't know who I trust more. Fucking Tyler Huntley. I was so mad. I texted you. I was like, you know, I'm not going to ask for a mulligan, but I would say if there was any reason for a mulligan, it's Lamar Jackson getting canceled the day of the game for COVID, being ruled out. I think that's – That would have deserved a mulligan. I'm not going to ask for it because the Ravens obviously won that game. But, man, this one lost a lot of its luster in a couple weeks. I'm going with the Ravens here because the Browns fans need to calm down on the Baker Mayfield train. The dude is playing with, like, three surgeries pending. Like, the dude has has a broken clavicle, the torn meniscus. He's Um, out nine months for his, his shoulder alone. That labrum like, like, repair with a tor- or with a broken humerus. That's a labrum is six months no matter what. A labrum with a broken humerus is is a guaranteed nine months. I'm this dude positive. is trotting out there every Sunday just for your pleasure, so your team can have a chance. And you don't want to pay him next year. Please don't pay him because I will add that quarterback to another co- coaching quarterback carousel add him to the Bronco hype train. Because man, I hope they don't pay him. I hope they 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 go after a quarterback next year in a terrible quarterback class because Baker Mayfield is doing everything possible he can. And people forget Baker Mayfield was the savior of your franchise, that your franchise was worse, the worst franchise in football until number six put on that jersey and won you your first regular season game in two years and also won your first home game in five years. So, yeah, put a little bit of respect on Baker Mayfield's name for the fact that he's running out there every week and, and, and getting booed by your terrible fan base because you have because you're incompetent and LeBron James isn't playing basketball there anymore. You deserve better, Baker Mayfield. Denver will treat you like a god. That's all I'll say. I'm gonna put. Cle- I'm gonna give Cleveland fans a little bit of a break. They haven't been good in so long that they have no idea what the fuck they're watching. Just- they have absolutely no clue because <laughs> the fact that you're saying Baker shouldn't be paid. Oh, I, I would have paid him after the, he won that first regular season game. <laughs> I would have given him a five-year oh, yeah, contract enough. extension. It's enough right for then. me. Pay him there, yeah. Oh, man, that's I, that's crazy how little respect they're giving him. But I'm going Baker. I like his uh, commercials. I think those are, that's the new highlight of Sundays now is the commercials. But uh, that one's a rough one. Uh, Sunday night football matchup, not, a, not quite as good as what we thought. Monday night football, terrible. Seahawks going to Washington to play the Washington football team. Uh, this was the team that made me look stupid last week. So for that reason, I'm going Washington. Um, Dude, Taylor, Seab- Taylor uh, Heineke looks good. Yeah. He looks good. He looks very good. And the defense we thought would struggle without Shea Sean played pretty well. Obviously, Carolina still put up whatever they want to. But Antonio Gibson, welcome to your to the football season. Finally, you show up this week. Look what happens. And all they got to do is play action, get to Aaron McClure in space, and get Logan Thomas back into the picture too. And this Washington football team is, is showing why they are a playoff team last year. Mm-hmm. Like, Washington team is very, very solid, and the Seahawks don't have a identity. It's not like they're looking for – it's not like they have a single one they know of, that they have multiple. They don't have a single one. And the Seahawks are just all over the place. Trade Russell Wilson – uh, this is quarterback number four now. This episode, I've said, come to the Broncos and 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 just move on because the Seahawks 
You got to figure something out. Tom Brady ruined your franchise like he did with Atlanta, like he almost did or is right now with the Chiefs as well. So you're, you're, you're the first one in line. I'm sorry you had to be the be the first one, but you, you, Tom Brady ruined your franchise. It's If I told you that Seahawks and Washington, they, they were going to be almost identical in record. Honestly, I don't know how you felt about the Seahawks going into the season, but I didn't see them at three and seven at this point of the season that's a total shock and it's, something's gone wrong there I don't know necessarily if it's the coaching or the quarterback because you know Russell Wilson's asked for, for a trade for the past two off seasons it doesn't necessarily bode well for your locker room but uh, we're both on Washington and and with that that's going to be the end of week 12 of the FEOTB NFL pick and be sure to vote in our Twitter polls at FEOTB pod uh, I bit, I passed you guys up. I told you guys you had to start getting – making sure that your stuff was on point or I was coming back. And all it took was two weeks, and I'm back in the number two spot, and now I get to go ahead and set my sights on number one because I got to continue to have these nine and five weeks.